Spotify, y'all be looking like who's that guy? Got a CIB, Ranger S F M E O D. This is how I roll, Salabar bring me out of control. Fake shit in these big ass rolls, cause all this brass gets all these hoes. Girl, look at these medals. Girl, look at these medals. Girl, look at these medals. I I spec ops. Girl, look at these medals. Girl, look at these medals. Girl, look at these medals. I I spec ops. When I walk in the bar, this is what I see. Everybody stopping and staring at me. I got medals on my chest and I ain't afraid to show it. Show it. Show it. Show it. Stolen and I know it. Stolen and I know it. Yeah, when I'm on parade, I'm out there soaking up accolades. When you challenge me, I just blame PTSD. This is how I roll, yo, Ranger S, it's time to go. We headed to the bar, baby, don't be nervous. No lines, no charge, more time and service. Girl, look at these medals. Girl, look at these medals. Girl, look at these medals. I, I, I spec ops. Girl, look at these medals. Girl, look at these medals. Girl, look at these medals. I, I, I spec ops. When I walk in the bar, this is what I see. Everybody stopping and staring at me. I got medals on my chest and I ain't afraid to show it. Show it. Show it. Show it. Show it. Stolen and I know it We'll see if that uh, video gets this whole stream uh, or this whole video copyright struck. Uh, it's not about making money on it, though. So uh, before we get into the whole Wrangler stuff, uh, just a little bit of uh, house cleaning. Um, so congrats to my Oklahoma Sooners. Horns down. Great game against Texas. Uh, yesterday, I don't want to turn this into a sports stream, but uh, just – you know, even people that aren't Texas or Oklahoma fans or Texas fans, uh, a lot of people saying it's one of the greatest games that they've ever seen uh, yesterday. Uh, well, two days ago now. Uh, it's late, early Monday morning. Uh, I just got out of the hospital a little bit ago. We'll get into that here in a second. Um, and I wanted to greatly apologize to everybody that was waiting to see the uh, live stream I had scheduled on Saturday night. Uh, like I said, I ended up in the hospital. We'll get into all that and, and explain that. Um, uh, I don't want to get into a wrangler right off the bat, but I will here shortly because one of the things that I want to address, there are some newcomers kind of into this whole frauder arena. Um, you got stone vet, you got MSG retired, uh, and some other players and, uh, stone vet, um, especially I feel has been at a line of bullshit with me, uh, as long as well as other people. Um, it's, it's really, uh, frustrating that, uh, you know, Wrangler has no moral compass. He has no baseline. He has no right or wrong. It's what, a, it's what's best for him. You know, if it's, uh, crawling through somebody's window and, uh, stealing something, which wasn't long ago, that's what he'll do. Or, allegedly uh, 
executing somebody on Christmas Eve for a PlayStation. Um, like I said, it's allegedly. I mean, I'm just going based off of what other people have researched. I haven't looked into Rango's background a lot because I really just haven't had that much interest. Kind of got sucked into this whole thing. I took a couple months off of YouTube to deal with life bullshit. Um, and uh, to deal with a lot of stuff they had putting on had been putting off health wise um so uh wrangler like a bitch and we'll get into wrangler here in a second but i just wanted to say in the thumbnail uh wrangler decided because i questioned his service record that he was going to dox me and he did just like just like any fraudster he's no better than any fraudster uh, and I got to be really careful about what information I put out there, because if anybody thinks that Wrangler wouldn't try fucking with my career, with my job, uh, because his little fees are hurt, uh, I got you uh, oceanfront property sale to, to buy in Arizona because he absolutely would do that. I mean, he has no moral compass. Like I said, he, he has no he has no right or wrong. It's what's best for him. And we'll get into that because there's a lot of history that goes with the whole Welsh thing um and everything else and there, there's one thing that i've been 100 truthful about you know with my channel um i've been 100 truthful about my background and i've shown receipts um so anyways uh i wanted to get into the whole health thing and kind of what's been going on the past three months um so in uh in and a lot of you know some of this stuff like with my criminal history and stuff but a lot of the newcomers have aren't aware of it and they're they're basing their opinions on some of that stuff based on Wrangler and a few other agitators in our community, which is why I'm probably going to be taking a break from this community for a while. Um, it's not the same community when Big Cat was here uh, to where we could just point and laugh at stupid. It, you know, it's turned into this nest of vipers um, that they'll take something out of context and make it out to be something it's not. And it's just not the community that I uh got to know when i first got in this community what uh maybe it was right before right when COVID hit i think is when i really got into this um uh you know saw some of big cat stuff with flat earthers and you know we would just point and laugh at stupid you know flat earthers um fraud -earthers, sovereign citizens and all that stuff then it was just a community we could all just come together and laugh and there wasn't this infighting um it's just like everybody's looking to who can we take down more now, I'm not saying Wrangler shouldn't be exposed for his stuff. Um, I tried staying out of this Wrangler stuff for a while now um, because it's not my lane. It's not what I came here on YouTube to do. I wanted to bring entertainment, be funny, uh, to expose frauditors, and it's turned into something completely different. It's a complete shit show in this community right now. Um, personally now I find frauditors boring, uh, if I'm going to keep it honest, uh, the only time I really want to see any frauditor is if they're getting tased or arrested or sentenced or anything like that. I mean, you know, I'm sick of seeing videos to where, you know, these frauditors go and harass, you know, some of the nicest people working in our, you know, governments or even in private businesses now, or even churches, they go, they go and audit churches. And these people, these unsuspecting, good, decent people uh, are absolutely harassed by these frauditors. Um, and nothing happens, especially in California in uh, other places to where, you know, Illinois is a good example, um, you know, to where they just get away with doing absolutely anything they want. And those videos piss me off. They uh, increase my stress level. And I just have no, um, I understand, I understand the argument that we have to, uh, um, look to see what frauditors are up to, uh, but I just have no desire to see them absolutely verbally, sometimes uh, physically assault people that hurt their feelings by pepper spraying them. And nine times out of ten, nothing ever happens to them. You know, uh, it's kind of it kind of goes into that uh, nationwide let's let's hug a criminal instead of actually um, enforcing the law. So, with that said, I want to get into my health issues. Uh, which is one of the way, which is one of the reasons I'm probably going to step away from YouTube for a while, for a while, at least from this community, I might go down to college football stuff because there's no stress in that. You know, it's, it's a stress reliever. I have a bunch of fun with it. Love talking, talking college football, but, um, you know, um, 
I've been doxxed from here to Sunday. I've addressed it all, and this stuff just keeps coming up. And then even people in our own community, whether it was Welsh or no, it's um, your you Wrangler doxing me um, in that in that um, thumbnail that I posted. Uh, so Wrangler did dox me in a video. I privacy struck it. Um, you know, if I was if I was in let's say hospitality. Just my name being out there wouldn't be a big deal. But me and Wrangler have had this conversation with other people in the background when I was actually getting doxxed by other frauditors and by Welsh and everybody else, uh, how extremely dangerous that is with working in corrections. Um, I am surrounded and work with psychopaths all the time, you know, and they would love to have my name. And let's leave no doubt about it with Wrangler. His whole reason of doxing my name and image was to say, hey, if you say anything bad about me, I'm going to point people in the right direction to you. You know, it's a it's an intimidation tactic, but I'm going to try watching my mouth today. I really am, but uh, this kind of gets me fired up. You know, he knows this. We've had this discussion. We've had this discussion in the past. He thought it was really shitty uh, when Welsh, this is what he said at the time. I don't know if he believed it. The guy has no values, morals, ethics, or anything like that. Um, he, he just, uh, he thought it was really shitty when Welsh and other people uh, doxed me. Um, he understood, at least he said at the time, that it was incredibly dangerous to even dox my name because if somebody saw, let's say, you know, an inmate that I had worked with in the past, um, you know, it could leave breadcrumbs to searching my name on YouTube to where Broken System, Broken Trust has legit doxed me with my name, address. He tried docking my uh, uh, employer on a video and ended up being a past employer. Um, you know, so there, you know, he tried screwing with my career. Um, ben down in Quincy, I'm not going to use his last name because he will privacy strike me. Uh, like he did in some other videos where I exposed uh, some really bad shit that he was up to that was in the public arena with public records. And, um, you know, he legit doxed not only me, my phone number, my email address, he doxed uh, my entire family, my father's address uh, in Iowa and all this stuff. And and the whole time, was like, this is so shitty. This is really dangerous for you. Uh, but now, evidently, when you question his stolen valor, which it appears, I mean, it appears he is absolutely stolen valor that, um, you know, his words mean nothing. It's just he got mad. He got butt hurt. He's been exposed. And he decided that he was going to dox me. Well, anyway, I privacy struck that video. It's been taken down. He's been uh, given a privacy strike for that. Um, and it's, uh, like I said, if I was working in hospitality or logistics, business, whatever, you know, fill in the blank, you know, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But when you have a target on your back from inmates or your uh, police officer uh, doxing their, even just their name, it can be incredibly, incredibly dangerous. Um, but Wrangler doesn't care. He doesn't care. Um, and unlike uh, you know, Wrangler, you know, I have shown receipts in the past, um, you know, but anyways, let's, I don't have any script today. I'm just kind of just free willing it. And I'm not trying to make this the longest video ever. Um, just wanted to cover some of the points that I wanted to make on my live stream on Saturday night. So anyways, earlier this year, um, I ended up having, I want to go over the medical stuff first. So people can kind of get an understanding of why I've taken a break over the past three months and why I'm kind of going to take to extend that break, at least for now. It could be two weeks. It could be two months. I don't know. Um, if I come back to this community, it's going to be in a much different way. Um, I'm going to try to find a new cover, maybe frauditors in a different way that no one else is doing. Um, but I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure what that's going to look like. I don't know if it's going to I turn into more of a trolling thing, going after maybe people like Cyrax and different wolf cows. I just haven't decided, but the stress of people, even in our own community, doxing me, knowing how dangerous that is, is bullshit. And it's only because their feelings got hurt. Never wronged any of these people. Uh, like with Welsh, she was, well, uh, we think you're being too aggressive by going after these frauditors, which is nuts. We weren't aggressive at all. Um, and and um, Wrangler was totally against it the whole time. But anyways... Before we get into that, I know I keep going back to it, but uh, I'm free willing here. So everybody just stick with me. We're going to try to get through this quick and easy. Um, 
So early this year, I believe it was in January, late January, I had COVID for the, that was my fifth time. Uh, I'm double jabbed um, and I'm not saying anything against the vaccinations because that will quickly get the channel removed. But read, in, read into it as you may. I'm not saying vaccinations are bad, but double jabbed, had COVID five times. It is what it is. Uh, late Feb late um, February, I ended up being in and, of the, in and out of the hospital for two weeks. I had major vasculitis um, that just was all over my legs, feet, chest, back, arms. Uh, it still kind of flares up every once in a while. Um, I was very, very sick. Um, I was uh, in and out of the hospital. Uh, my liver enzymes were through the roof. They uh, said that I was in the beginning stages of liver failure. Um, and they couldn't figure out why they thought maybe it was the last time I had COVID that maybe it wreaked havoc on, havoc on my system. They thought it may be an, another underlying situation. And so they ended up setting me up with a bunch of specialists because they just couldn't figure out why this was happening. Cause overall everything else was healthy. Um, heart was good. Lungs were good. Um, you know, blood pressure, blood pressure was good. Um, just, just everything was good. But I was really, really sick. And uh, they, it was one of the worst vasculitis cases they said they'd ever seen. Um, so they ended up setting me up with some specialists. And the specialists, um, I would set an appointment with my last agency. Uh, you know, and it, sometimes it was two months out because, you know, setting up an appointment with, with the specialists, especially in rural America, sometimes it, they're just booking two months out. So uh, they would approve my time off to go see those specialists and doctors. And here's my, I still have my uh, wristband on from just getting out of the hospital again. Um, but when, when it came a day or two before I was supposed to go see that specialist doctor, they would say, hey, you know, we're shorthanded and we're going to cancel your time off. So you're going to have to reschedule that appointment, you know, with these specialists. And so I was never able to get with these specialists that might be able to get to the bottom of it. Um, I, you know, me and my last the last jail I was working with, we were really button heads. And I flat out told him, I said, I, I said, I've been putting my health on hold for you guys. I've been working my ass off for you guys. I just can't do this anymore. I said, I have to be able to, because I started having little flare ups, nothing major, but it's just not feeling well at all. Like you, something was off. And I was like, if I don't get on top of this, you know, I had to make a decision. This is like what, three, three and a half months ago. This is kind of when I went off YouTube for a while. I made this, I made a decision, even though I didn't have another job lined up, I said, I can't do this anymore. Um, I'm sacrificing way too much for this agency and I just, I can't do it anymore. So, um, I had to make a decision. There was, I had to focus on my health. I, it was 100% I had to focus on, um, you know, finding a new agency to work for, um, you know, whether it's corrections or a police officer or anything like that, the hiring processes are very long, three to six months at least, um, because you have to go through the background checks. You have to do the psychological evaluations. You have to go through, you know, several different interviews. And I was putting my uh, net very, very wide, different states, Texas, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Iowa, uh, even California, some other different states. I was casting a very uh, wide net because with my um, background, you know, in, um, in, uh, you know, education and with so many years of experience being a corrections officer, I felt that, um, you know, I was kind of trapped in that tri-state area where I was working to where, you know, it wasn't going to be, it was hard to find uh, a decent pay, um, with my experience in education. So I ended up leaving that agency. So I had to make a decision. I said, I had all this stuff going on with YouTube and YouTube, I'd allowed it to kind of take over. And that's easy to do, right? You're finding early success. You're getting a lot of subs, uh, early, you know, we were streaming between me and only frauds. We were streaming sometimes four or five, six nights a week. And it would be anywhere from two hours to six hours a night. Uh, I was making several videos a week and it was just consuming my life. I, I kind of allowed it to be an addiction and had all this stuff going on with uh, the the uh, t-shirt fundraiser that went tits up um, and some other stuff. And I just said, 
I need to take YouTube. I just need to cut it off right now, set it on the side. I will come back to it. We'll make everything right. We'll get to it. Uh, but right now I need to focus 100% on gaining new employment with a new agency. Uh, one that was going to do me right. One that I felt really good with that. Hey, if I do have a specialist appointment that they're going to allow me to take that time. Uh, like I said, you know, I'll work my ass off for an agency. I have no problem doing that, but uh, you know, there, it needs to be reciprocal. So if I'm going to bust my ass for your company, if I need a half a day off of my schedule to go see a specialist to figure out what the hell's going on with me, you know, that's something that I really needed and I wasn't getting. So, excuse me, I'm having to, to really suck down water. They gave me diuretics over the past 48 hours with the lung build, with the water uh, fluid buildup around my lungs and everything. And it really got me dehydrated. So I'm really trying to catch up on water and everything. And we'll get into that in a second. So anyway, come this weekend, um, uh, I had been putting off my uh, health and everything. And uh, Saturday morning, I woke up and my heart was racing. Uh, I don't know why. It was, you know, on my smartwatch, you can keep track. It keeps track of your beats per minute and everything. And I was ranging and I wasn't doing anything. I was sitting there watching TV, watching game day. And football, even though uh, even though I love college football and you have some anxiety and stuff, I've never had anything like this. And I didn't I didn't I don't think it had anything to do with football, which it didn't. Um, but my beats per minute resting was anywhere, depending on just you know, every five minutes, it was anywhere from 100, 130 beats per minute to 180 beats per minute. You know, if I go up to go, you know, it'd be resting, it would be maybe 140, 130. If I got up just just to use the bathroom, you would, it would shoot up to 160 beats per minute. Um, it didn't get any better through the game. There was at one point during the game, uh, it just felt like my heart was going to beat out of my chest. It was just going to explode. Uh, and I just wasn't feeling well, had a lot of chest pain. Uh, I actually turned off my Oklahoma game for a little bit, just laid down, tried doing some deep breaths, just trying to get my heart to slow down. Um, and it wasn't working. And I was like, well, I'm just going to tough through this game. If it's still an issue after the game, uh, then I'll go to the hospital and look at it. Because by this time I'm Googling, you know, resting beats per minute, you know, 130 beats per minute, 150 beats per minute. And of course, you know, when you Google stuff like that, really bad stuff shows up. Then it's like, hey, it could be this, this it could be congestive heart failure. It could be this. And so now I'm getting freaked out, um, you know, and I'm kind of having a hard time breathing. Not the, not a real hard time breathing, just that it felt like I was always just trying to gasp for air, kind of like I was just a little shorter breath, kind of where you just kind of had to take a deep breath every once in a while just to feel like, you know, you, know, you were getting enough air. Um, so anyways, the game ended. Uh, about what was it? 3 p.m. Central Time, uh, and if my heart was going faster at this point, and so I said, "I'm not doing. I'm not. I'm not fooling around with this anymore. I got to figure out what's going on." So I ended up going to the hospital. It's a very, very large hospital, very good hospital. They got me right in. Uh, my blood pressure that's always been very, very good, even though as a bigger guy, you know, I always hang around the 130 over 90 area. Uh, was it was like 190 the first reading if i remember right it was 198 over 124 something like that it, it was very very high my uh beats per minute was like 165 um on the first reading of everything um so it was kind of scary they did a bunch of tests anyways uh but trying to make a long story short what what it came down to was there was fluid around my lungs um that was putting a lot of stress on my lungs and my heart was reacting to it. Um, so they didn't give me a diuretic. I, I had texted high, highest priestess. Uh, while I was in the emergency room, I had no cell service. You know, I had looked at no cell service at all. So I couldn't text anybody. I couldn't, um, I couldn't uh, call anybody. Um, couldn't take down a live stream, even if I wanted to, but I wasn't focused on the live stream at that point. I was just freaked out uh, to be honest. And, uh, you know, of course, one of the doctors comes in and says, oh, I, you know, I'm concerned with the swelling in your ankles and the fluid in your lungs and everything. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a sign that you may have uh, heart failure. And so I'm just like, well, that's not good. <laughs> so uh, one of the aides comes in afterwards. He goes, hey, I'm not supposed to tell you this, but heart failure doesn't mean to the, to the layman what it means to doctors. You know, you hear it as a lay person. You don't know anything about uh, medical issues. You think your heart's going to stop and you might, uh, your power button might be hit here 
in the near future. Well, that doesn't mean what it means. It just means that, you know, as this aid explained, hey, it just means your heart's not pumping at 100%. Maybe it's only pumping at 90%, which is still very, very, very good. But there's still that 10% of the blood that's not getting recirculated in the system. And so I was like, well, why didn't you tell me that? Because it got kind of me freaked out. But anyways, the, they gave me the diuretics. Uh, highest priestess told me what, what it was called. And they told me it was like, it started with the mass, I think. Um, I can't remember the official name of it. But they started pumping that through me. They gave me on some pain meds uh, to relax. Um, got that fluid outside of uh, my lungs and everything. Uh, got that kicked out of my system, which means I was at the toilet every, you know, 30 minutes, you know, urinating that fluid out. It was just, it was just a ton of it. Started feeling a lot better. They kept me overnight uh, doing EKGs every uh, three hours. Um, they did a, um, oh, what's it called? Um, echocardiogram. So they did that uh, early this last morning. Uh, the doctors came in and said, everything looks good. Your heart's really good. Your lungs are really good. Your cholesterol's good. All your numbers are good. And just to kind of show you the extent of testing. I got to be careful what I show here because I don't want to dox myself. I mean, you look at, you look at all these tests. I mean, it's just, they were digging and digging and digging with all these types of blood tests. Um, and they couldn't find anything. Nothing stuck out. Um, they don't know what caused it. Um, what I found was interesting was that um, they have two theories. Their first theory that caused this is stress. Um, they said stress affects everybody's body very, different, very differently. Um, could be, you know, and I told them about that stuff that had happened in February. They were able to contact that hospital a long ways away, get those medical records. Um, they thought it could be stress, but that wasn't their leading reason as to why I was having these problems and why I had those liver problems and uh, and uh, vasculitis back in February. Their leading reason or their theory, leading theory, is that there's something percolating in my body. They don't know what it is. They think they don't think it's anything major because all the major tests have been have been good um heart's good everything but they think that um it's just something minor lingering in my body that's causing these flare-ups last time it was my liver this time with my heart and lungs and uh they just can't find it and this is the second major really good healthcare hospital that just can't find what that underlying condition is and uh, that's kind of the leading consistence co leading consensus that's what the last hospital uh, theory was too. Um, but they said it might just take the, you know, they, they said whatever it is, it's hiding. They think it's hiding really good and that it might just take the right set of onset of symptoms to be able to finally say, aha, we're going to look here for this and that, which could be causing these problems over the past nine months. Anyways, so what they wanted me to do was to uh, one of the major things they really wanted me to do was cut out as much stress as my life uh, that, that I can for at least the next month or two. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why I'm going to kind of stay off of YouTube a little bit longer um, because it's just, it's not fun anymore. It's just nothing but stress. I mean, it's like here you have this guy that you thought, he was your bro, you know, Wrangler, doxing my ass now, knowing how dangerous that is. He doesn't care. You know, you you question his service, which it's pretty evident now that um, it's stolen valor. I, and I don't see even pretty relevant anymore. I mean, he he's stolen valor. I mean, there's no question about it. You know, it's like I listen to uh, a lot, you know, with Don Shipley. And like I said, I wanted to stay out of this whole Wrangler bullshit, but I wanted to I wanted to stay firm, fair, and consistent, and I was really hard on Jeremy Dipshit Dewitt and other stolen valor idiots. And what would it say about me if I wasn't consistent with Wrangler? I mean, it's very clear with MSG retired, um, with um, Shiz, with um, Stone Vet. The research they have done, it's clear that. He is absolutely stolen Ballard. So when he said that's 
that's kind of the history on what I've done uh, or my uh, medical history uh, over this past what, 10 months now. Um, and that's why I kind of had to take a break for a while, um, you know, with employment situation and everything. But one of the things that I opened myself up to with criticism, with criticism, rightly so. Um, and this is, this is, this is my fault. Um, and I kind of knew it may be a potential is issue when I decided, Hey, I'm gonna take a break from YouTube for mo for, a, for a while is that we had a t-shirt, um, fundraiser that went tits up. It was a mess. We had, you know, I kind of went into it just half-assed, um, not a good plan. And we had stuff in cash app. We had stuff in PayPal and we had to go through it because it's all mixed in with, you know, donations and all that stuff. Um, but I, you know, you know, I, I said the entire time, Hey, this will get re refunded. I've take, I have to take break from YouTube for a second. I will get to it. Trust me on that. It's all been refunded at this point. I think, um, cash app, it's all been refunded. What was that? Two months ago, two and a half months ago, maybe around that area. Uh, all the PayPal people that I was finally able to get to it maybe three weeks ago. I think when I started getting, getting back into YouTube a little bit, trying to catch up on what all was going on, all those got refunded too. So everybody's been taken care of to anybody saying that I was out there scamming people. It's ridiculous. It's not now. Is it fair criticism to say that maybe I should have stayed with YouTube a little bit until I got those refunded, then sit on the side on the sideline? Sure, sure. But I just ask you to take into consideration that at the time I was facing kind of a crisis. You know, I was like looking at my health um, and what was going on with um, my employment situation, and I just had to be 100% focused on getting uh, with a new agency. Um, so that's what I did. Now, when I talk about corrections. Um, Stonevet had a very good question um, on one of his community posts a couple nights ago. He asked as a felon, how was he able to work on in corrections? That's a very good question. You know, and I've really, I really like Stonevet. Um, me and him, we were going back and forth in different um, um, uh, posts in, in his community uh, chat. I think based on some of the tone that, like one of his one of his posts were something like, "Well, corrections main he he may be just a smidge better than Wrangler, but not that much better." Um, I think that comment alone takes into a lot of misinformation that's out there, you know, and a lot of people that said, "Hey, he's scamming people on on YouTube because this hasn't been refunded yet. It wasn't refunded, you know, uh, you know, immediately." And like I said. You're right to criticize me on that. That's fine. Uh, but like I said, it's all been it's all been refunded. And if anybody out there feels like it hasn't been refunded because anything labeled with T-shirt donation, it's all been refunded. If you feel like that you were owed ten bucks out of the donation that I maybe have missed, or um, maybe you felt like it was a thirty dollar donation instead of twenty five, I think it, I I'm ninety nine percent percent sure that everything is correct. But for anybody out there that thinks that they need some refund on something, please let me know. Um, just email me, uh, corrections101yt, short for YouTube, at gmail.com. Uh, and I'll keep an eye on that, and we, we'll work that out. But as far as I'm concerned, everybody's been uh, uh, refunded. So, um, so the good question is, being a felon, how can I be a corrections officer? Okay, great question. Depends on the jurisdiction, uh, whether state, local, county, it really depends. So with the state of Nevada, for instance, I was looking to apply at Clark County, Nevada, which is Las Vegas, for their jail. They actually have a statewide ban on anybody with any felony, regardless of the felony, the circumstances about the felony, the length of time of, of the felony from when it happened, what you've done since the felony, doesn't matter. You can't, you can't be a corrections officer. Uh, in Nevada, which I disagree with, but that's that's their state. That's their prerogative. They're welcome to um, make laws as they see fit. Sorry, I'm really parched with being dehydrated. In Iowa and Illinois, uh, the two states that I've been a corrections officer in, both at the in the adult system and in the juvenile uh, correction system, it depends on the agency they take into account what the felony was for. So not all felonies are created equal. So 
shooting somebody in the head on Christmas Eve for a PlayStation, even though there may not be a conviction, let's say he was convicted of it, is a lot different from writing bad checks. Okay? Same thing with maybe crawling through somebody's window or stealing a large amount of product from their previous employer uh, to fuel a drug addict. A lot different than writing bad checks. So there's these varying differences of felonies, right? Mine was the lowest class of felony out there. Um, I'm not, and I'm not trying to marginalize anything that I did. I mean, everything that was stemmed from uh, an opioid addiction, a legal opioid addiction. So what I mean by legal opioid addiction was, so uh, for Stone Vet and who, those who aren't familiar with my background. So in 2010, I was almost killed in a motorcycle accident, uh, shattered my rib cage, major open chest, plural effusion surgery. Um, and, uh, Doctors were just shoveling down the opioids, you know, as much as I could take them. I was taking, I was taking, uh, you know, eight to 10 Norco a day. Uh, they also, you know, I also had, you know, uh, side effects from it, like muscle spasms, you know, over the long term. So I was on muscle relaxers. Um, I was having a great deal of anxiety. Um, and so they put me on Xanax. So I'm on, on I'm on all these very different, you know, powerful drugs all 100% legally obtained, all 100% given by doctors. I never got a single pill uh, on the street or anything, um, but it, 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 it rewired my brain at long-term opioid abuse. And I say abuse because it's more than I should have been taking. Now, I'm not trying to blame any doctor or trying to shove my problems on anybody else. This was a conscious decision that I made, even though I wasn't in the right mind. Uh, it had rewired my brain into a totally different person. So I think it was what 2015. I wrote a bunch of very large bad checks, like um, you know, for a new roof. Uh, for uh, I'm trying to think what else um, doesn't really matter. Bunch of very large uh, bad checks, um, and it caught a felony in Illinois for deceptive practice, which is bad checks, and then two felonies, three felonies in Iowa. So it had Des Moines County, no, two felonies, Des Moines County, Iowa, and uh, Lee County, Iowa. Um, and it was all from the same time. That whole time I was writing bad checks. The dates are a little bit different. The arrest dates are all the same, but the disposition dates were a little bit different because Illinois had to get finished with me before we moved on with Iowa. Um, so uh, when I was, so I had to earn the community trust again. Right, because I live in a small rural community, uh, people rightly so looked at me as a shitbag. Um, you know, for what I had done. Once people started getting to know the story, the kind of the circumstances around why I did what I did, it wasn't in my right mind at all. Um, then you know, I started was able to start earning trust with the community back. You know, I haven't taken a single pill since then, except for um, when I broke my ankle. I think I took a uh, some pain medicine, some pain pills for six days, maybe seven days. Um, and then of course, when I like with this latest scare this weekend, um, uh, they came me some uh, pain medication to the, uh, IV, uh, to get me to relax so they could do their work when I initially went in. Other than that, I've been clean. I mean, uh, I passed every drug test. I've, uh, I've probably went through eight major background checks in the past two years, I, I would assume. Um, but once once I earned the trust back and, you know, jails were able to look at, OK, what's the felony for? OK, it was bad checks. What was the circumstance circumstances behind the bad checks? OK, he had an opioid addiction following a motorcycle accident. He's been clean ever since. Uh, he's prior law enforcement, police officer and a corrections officer, um, had a successful logistics business before that. OK, is this felony? Is that who he is or these felonies, you know, from that same time? Is that who he really is or is that a blip on the radar and that's not really who he is and what has he done since? So let's go through it. Um, I'm going to show receipts unlike Wrangler. Wrangler doesn't do any of this shit. You know? Wrangler, uh, as a matter of fact, he said on several occasions that he graduated from the University of Texas uh, with a criminal justice degree. And I started having a lot of doubts with that because in a lot of the videos that we did, whether it's live streams or regular videos, he would try to give legal conclusions or uh, break down law that he was way off. I mean, first year criminal justice students would know that he's completely wrong on his analysis. OK, um, so let's go ahead and show and I've shown this before. But like I said, this is for the new guys like um, who have come.
kind of got mixed in this community. Uh, this is for Stone Vet, uh, MSG. You know, I'm I'm an open book. I show all my shit. Um, I'm not proud of uh, my convictions in the past. That was seven years ago. Uh, I'm not proud of it, but it is who I am. You know, one of the things that I do, it's like regular. What do you do for your community now? I mean, he, he's still getting ready to be sentenced on felonies. I think he's been convicted of it. Um, I think um, a new round of uh, felonies or maybe he's getting ready to go to trial. I don't know. But he's 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 still under felony charges. OK. Um, and what the, one of the standards I've always had is it's not about who you are five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. I judge you on who you are today. A good story is. When I was in my mid twenties, uh, I dated this girl, great girl. We, you know, we just didn't work out and ended up later meeting my uh, now ex-wife. But uh, she was a great girl. Her dad was an ex-felon and had to do with uh, methamphetamine charges. I think, I, and I, and I can't remember. I know they were methamphetamine related, and he had gotten ser in a series of trouble. Uh, I think one of them was manufacturing another dis distribution. Um, it's been so long ago now. I can't remember. It was probably 20 years ago. But it had been, when I started dating her, I think his last felony conviction was, I don't know, five years before that, seven, 10 years ago. It had been a minute. But anyways, uh, his name was Dale. And Dale um, opened a... Uh, not a construction, but a, a drywalling business and did other handyman services. And it was actually a decent business. It wasn't a huge business, but he did very, very well and uh, never went back on to methamphetamine. Uh, people judged him and I judged him on who he was then. Did he fuck up and have an addiction to methamphetamine and do some fuck shit? Yeah, he did. But who doesn't like a good redemption story? on people who have changed their lives around. Are we supposed to be rooting for those people? Instead of, you had a felony from eight years ago, no matter what you do now, doesn't matter. You're still, you're still fucked. Is that what we're supposed to do as a, a society now? That once you have a felony, regardless of what it is, regardless if it's murder or bad checks, we're supposed to say, you're always going to be a piece of shit. Regardless of what you do? No, that's stupid. Okay. People have to earn that trust back. Believe me, it's been a long road. It was it was a tough sled. I had to earn a lot of trust back. But unlike Wrangler, I have the receipts to prove it. All right, so let's go through this. I'm going to show right now. Like Wrangler said, he he went to University of Texas criminal justice degrees. Never been able to show any receipts. And if you go to the University of Texas website and search the data uh, the public database. With people, I think it, if I remember right, when I looked at it, it not only shows people who graduated from there, but actually attended there at all. And his name didn't come in there at all. I'm not going to do it in this video because I'm not going to show his name. I'm not going to, everybody knows his name. Don't take my word for it. Go to Google, University of Texas, um, uh, graduate search um, or attendance search or whatever. I can't remember exactly what I used. Go to that database, put his put in his name yourself. You'll see he was never a student there, never got a degree from there. So here's a college transcripts. Okay. And it's kind of hard to see on the split screen. So I'm going to go to just a second here. I'm going to pull it up in my it's too hard for me to see. Right here it is. Okay, so there you can see. So Western Illinois University, I carried a perfect 4.0 GPA. I uh, worked very, very hard. I was uh, was a full-time corrections officer at the same time. Uh, I kind of scrolled down a little bit so you couldn't see my name. Uh, but uh, anybody who knows my birth date, which is out there, it's the same birth date. Um, you know, fuck it. Just a second. trying to scroll there you go the very top you can see my name there you go okay my name's already out there fuck it 
Uh, but that should be my decision to make. Not fucking Wranglers put my name out there. And I'm just showing it for a second just so I can, just so in, in full disclosure, everybody can see it. So, I earned my associates from Southeastern Community College. Did very, very well there. Then went to Western Illinois University. Was in their, in their Law Enforcement and Justice Administration program. I uh, earned a perfect 4.0 um, GPA there. As you can see here, um, I have a Bachelor's of Science. Uh, the degree granted was uh, July 30th, 2021. My major was in Law Enforcement and Justice Administration with a minor in Corrections. Okay, so there you go. I'll stop sharing that after that. Now, before you get into law enforcement and justice administration, you know, part of the application process is you have to show, they ask you if you have any misdemeanors, felonies, or anything like that. Of course, I had to answer yes, and I had to go through a strict scrutiny background check to see the circumstances. Again, they look into the circumstances of everything. So was I just a thug who decided one night to go out and do something heinous? No, no, it wasn't anything like that. It was... I didn't get in a motorcycle accident planning to be an opioid addict, a legal opioid addict, uh, which changed me into a different person. You know, that wasn't the plan. But, uh, you know, that's that's something that take, take in advance, the circumstances behind the felony uh, convictions. OK, so now we're going to look at. A second here. Make sure I get the right one. All right. So my goal with uh, graduating, I want to make sure it's pulled up here on the video. Yes, it is. The major thing that I wanted to do um, is I wanted to get my law enforcement just administration degree, and then I wanted to go to law school. So I ended up taking the LSAT test, uh, did average on it because I didn't have any time to study for it, but my GPA was uh, smoking high. Um, and so I ended up applying to Northern Illinois University, Southern Illinois University, and to the University of Oklahoma Law Schools. Um, I got a I got accepted into the Northern Illinois University uh, College of Law, the Southern Illinois University College of Law, and I got waitlisted at the University of Oklahoma, uh, primarily because of that low LSAT score. And I don't mean low as in because it was average, but low as in when you start getting to a T100 or a top 100 law school, you need to be above average in that law school, even with a really good GPA. So here it is. Uh, I was accepted into Northern Illinois University uh, College of Law, which I did attend. Now, one of the things with law school is that you have to get through the care, character and fitness aspect. If you have a felony conviction on your record, you 95% of the time, you're not going to be allowed into law school. I mean, they're so strict with the American Bar Association that if you're behind on child support, you're not going to get accepted into law school, okay? Because you're going to be an officer of the court. You need to show that let's say you do have a felony conviction, you need to, you better damn well show you're not that same person anymore, that you have made a lot of progress and that you're, uh, lack of better words, a pillar of the community now, uh, you know. Uh, and in my case, I think if you look at, let's say uh, you do have someone with a low level felony like me, uh, first time major offender, um, you know, you look at um, what the, think of kind of almost like, the perfect result would be for somebody uh, turning their life around. Um, you know, that's the thing in corrections, you know, it's about rehabilitation. So you look at the rehab rehabilitation, you look at that and you look at my story and it's like, you would think that everybody would want that. Like, okay. I was, it was, yeah, I had a minor charge back in 2000. It was a misdemeanor. It was, it, it, I was a police officer after that. It's a nothing burger, even though some people try to make it something to be something it's not, but this is the only time I've been in real, you know, decent trouble. And so you think, okay, well, what would be a really good comeback story from that? What do we want as a society from somebody who's committed this low level felony? Um, you know, what would we want from that? Okay. So he worked his ass off to work community trust back. He was worked his way up to being back in corrections. He's worked, uh, he's earned his AA degree, his bachelor's degree in law enforcement administration, uh, law enforcement justice administration, earned a perfect 4.0 at Western Illinois University, took the LSAT test, passed the character and fitness to get into law school, actually attended law school, all while being a full-time dad, a full-time corrections officer, uh, has no ha has had no violations since then, has been a perfect 
the pillar of the community. What else can I do? What the fuck else can I do? You know, and I understand you're you're feel to free like you think, or to feel like you think that once you're a felon, always a felon, you're always a piece of shit. I get that you're entitled to that position. I disagree with it, uh, but I ask you for people who think, okay, regardless of the felony, you're a piece of shit. Okay, what else am I supposed to do? You tell me. I'll wait. So anyways, um, so there's my letter of acceptance in the university or Northern Illinois University Law School. And then here I attend law school. I wasn't able to complete because of life, life circumstances. I've been to that whole thing. I can get into it later. Um, I'm going to pull up, pull up, uh, if I can find it here. Did I not set it up? Uh, I pulled up the wrong one. Anyways, it was, let me try one more time. I'm a tech God, not. Um, let me find it here real quick. It won't take me a second. Anyways, it's in a pre previous video. I, you know, I pulled up the American Bar Association to where I was a student member of the American Bar Association. So I passed a character in fitness, um, which, like law enforcement, it's it's like a proctology exam. It's it's really rough. You have to provide all the court documents, circumstances. You have to have uh, references from law enforcement, references from uh, professors, from other people. It's a really grueling process, and mine took about double, maybe even triple the time it took to get the acceptance just because I do have felony convictions, which it should take that long. I mean, I, I should get extra scrutiny. I was able to show, hey, I'm not that same person anymore. I don't know what else people want me to do. Um, you know, if somebody says, hey, because you have a felony conviction seven years ago, you're always going to be a piece of shit. You're entitled to that, you're, you're entitled to that uh, position, but I disagree with it. Uh, but you're entitled to that. So, uh so wrangler i'm just gonna touch on him real quickly because honestly he's he's a nobody to me he really is i mean what's he to society what does he give to society here's the thing um not only have i accomplished what i have you know uh academically uh professionally bounced back uh from the lowest of lows to kind of the highest of highs you know regardless of the the health um issues but you know my kids are proud of me uh my family is proud of me my community is proud of me uh you know people that i work with are proud of me you know um one of the things i do is i'm a i'm a board member of our local uh homeless alliance so we deal with giving the homeless um um warming centers in the winter, cooling centers in the summer. And it's a big, you wouldn't think it'd be such a big task, but it is. You have to worry about bed, bug, bed bugs problem. You have to worry about if it's a facility where they can shower, we can do their laundry so that bed bugs don't um, uh, spread. Uh, you have to worry about a lot of these, a lot of the homeless, and this isn't to disparage them. It's not, but it's just a fact that there's a lot of mental health issues. There's a lot of drug use. And so you have to think of security issues and, um, different things to where, you know, homeless alliances don't have a ton of money. They, they work on a shoestring, shoestring budget. So you depend on having those staff with volunteers and stuff that you have to get trained. And, and it, it's hard to do. It's, it's, it's a lot of work. I, and not only have I given my time there, but I've given uh, resources there, uh, you know, personal resources to that cause. Um, you do anything like that Wrangler? I mean, Wrangler, you called me a bitch, okay? I'm not under any federal indictment, or actually any, uh, not federal indictment. I'm sorry, scratch that. Mea culpa, you're not under federal indictment as far as I know. Any felony indictment. I'm not under federal char or felony charges. Man, I'm on this, the federal kick. I don't know why. Anyways, um, uh, 
it's pretty compelling that based off of the records that Shiz was able to show that he probably killed somebody. And that's just my opinion. I can't say that 100% factually, but based off of what we know, um, it seems like that he killed someone on Christmas Eve over a PlayStation. I mean, it, it it's, it, you know, I would have to know more about it to, to be more concrete on about it. And I know it sounds like other people are working on that. That's not something I'm going to dig into. I'm going to let other people do that. Cause that's not my lane. Um, and then the stolen valor. Okay. I'm not a stolen valor. Fuck. Okay. Um, I have a brother that's currently in the Marine Corps. That's, um, a gunnery sergeant. I have another brother that was 0311, which is infantry and the Marine Corps, um, that pushed into Baghdad this last Iraq war. Uh, I have another brother who is, uh, in the air force. He's currently in the air force reserves before that he was in the air force. Uh, he's been in there for like 18 years. So he's in the reserves now finishing off his 20. But before that, he was full time for a long time as a drone pilot and as a recruiter. Um, now he's just finishing out his twenty uh, in the reserves, doing recruiting stuff. I think um, manning different, you know, big events and stuff like that. Uh, I also have a brother-in-law that's married to my sister that's up in Alaska. That he's a Coast Guard um, boat captain of some sort. I'm my lingo is very bad for the military. I don't, you know, unlike Wrangler, I haven't studied different, you know, terms to make people think just like Jeremy DeWitt that, um, you know, he served in the military. I'm not going to do that, but, um, where was I? Oh yeah. So I'm not, I'm not a stolen umbrella guy. Um, I have no, I have no charges pending at me at all. Ever since my uh, felony issues uh, back in uh, 2016, 2017, whatever, whenever it was, uh, I lose track of time. Uh, I haven't had any issues at all with the law. None. Period. In a story. Been a model citizen. You know, uh, been clean of opioids. Haven't had any issues at all. Uh, can you say that, Wrangler? You kind of, you're currently uh, facing felony charges. Where's that DD-214? You know, what's funny is, you know, I listened to Don Shipley and MSG retired. You know, one of the things that it's a common reoccurring theme against the with those who commit stolen valor. I don't have my DD-214 because it's classified. It's in storage somewhere else. It's in my mama's attic and I don't live there. It got burnt up in a fire. They can never seem to have the dude. It's the same fucking excuse every time with their DD-214s. All Wrangler has to do is produce DD-214. That's it. Put the story to bed. But he can't. He won't. He could have had... Believe me. Um, what was the analogy I was going to use? I was thinking about this earlier. Um, what was it? Oh. Well, I mean, it was, it was kind of like when I first got doxxed. It was like you know, I was accused of not attending college and having these degrees and everything like that. And she always said, fuck you. I, here's my transcripts. <laughs> I have nothing to hide. Uh, I'm not lying about it. Put that shit to bed real quick. Um, he said, what, this has been going on. I've been off of YouTube for a while, but it's been, what, two, three months since this, you know, his uh, stolen valor has been into question. From what I understand, I've never been in the military, but from what I understand, talking to other people in the military, um, pretty damn easy to get your dd214 a copy of your dd214 why haven't you got a wrangler i mean be an open book like me show your shit show the receipts but you're gonna call me a bitch for what calling you up because you're you know a stolen valor piece of shit you know and here's the funny thing he doesn't and and my last point that i want to get to because you know we've been going an hour here and i didn't want to make it this long This guy has no moral compass. What do you mean by that? So when Welsh News Network came after me, him, Falcax, wait a second on the Falcax thing. This really pisses me off. We'll get we'll get to that in a second. Me, Wrangler, Falcax, only frauds. You know, we have the Tropatrol Army going on. 
Um, and then uh, Well News, I'm not going to use his real name, decided that he was going to dig into us and dox us because he felt that we were too aggressive going after fraudulenters, which was ridiculous at, at the time. But it is what it is. I've honestly Welsh the best. Go do your thing. I'm going to do my thing. Water under the bridge. I don't even care, you know. Um, and Wrangler was completely against that. Him and Falcax, and him and Falcax decided that you know once once uh, once uh, Welsh said that he was going to uh, dig into all of our backgrounds, they decided to capitulate to him. Wrangler and Falcax. They said, well, mm, you know, we're going to give a mea culpa on our live stream, but um, you know, corrections 101. And only frauds are not welcome on the stream. They can't defend themselves. We're going to bend the knee to Welsh News. And we know why he did that now. It, wa it wasn't a principled basis that they felt they had did anything wrong. Privately, they told us they didn't feel that they did anything wrong. Additionally, Wrangler said the whole time the main goal was for him to take Welsh down. And that this, this was you know a tactic that he was using um, with the main goal of taking Welsh down. And I was like, whatever, dude, you know, you, you just, you know, you don't have stand up, stand up on your convictions, man. You know, if you don't feel like you did anything wrong, stand up on your, for your convictions. So however that ends up. Uh, so he ended up saying how bad everything, you know, Welsh did. And I, and once Welsh did his expose on me, you know, trying to paint me into something that I wasn't, you know, Wrangler said how much bullshit that was. And I told him in text and in, I can't remember if it was text or it was direct messages and Discord. I haven't been on Discord for probably four months. I it's I have a better life without Discord. The Wrangler repeatedly said how wrong that was, how much bullshit that was. Um, and I told him, I was completely candid with him. I said, regardless of what your angle is with Welsh, if you're really my brother, you're really my friend, if you disagree with him doxing me and painting in, painting me into painting me into something that I'm not, I'd expect you to stick up for me, speak out on it. And he wouldn't do that because we know why, because Welsh would dig into him and find out all this bullshit. Okay. All this criminal history is pending the felony cases. And like I said, if this would have been seven years ago, I told, I told Wrangler in a text probably two weeks ago before I jumped into this, I said, bro, it's evident that you you washed out a basic with an injury. Just say it. At least I could respect that. Just come out and say, you know what, I fucked up. You know, I got carried away with, you know, uh, military service. You know, I got injured in boot camp. And, hey, I respect that. At least you gave it a go. You gave it a try. You tried to, uh, you know, uh, be an Army um, soldier, and it didn't work out because of an injury. I can respect that. You gave it a shot. But, no, it's not what happened. You gave all this bullshit story about you going overseas. I mean, did you pop a riser over Fallujah with Jeremy DeWitt? I don't know. You know, then you have all these real guys like, you know, Stone Vet, who have actually, you know, uh, MSG retired. Don Shipley, KFAR, all these guys, you know, that have actually served our country, um, you know, calling you out on it. And you won't show any, you know, you keep saying that everybody's lying, that they can't get your DD-214, which is bullshit. We've seen, have you seen Don Shipley, my guy? He gets those DD-214s. He gets all that stuff. MSG retired gets the stuff. I mean, you know, to, to call Don Shipley and MSG retired liars that they're fraudulent documents or whatever the claim is that you're doing now, Wrangler, is bullshit. They're war heroes. They're, they're heroes to this country. And especially now in these times to where, we may be going to war in Israel. You know, Hamas uh, has uh, waged war on Israel, and it's bad. It's really bad. We don't need to, you don't, Wrangler, you don't need to be taking our time consuming YouTube with your stolen valor bullshit. We need to be thinking of the heroes that have served our country. Chris Kyle, MSG Retired. Don Shipley. And we need to be thinking those troops are going to be going over there. It's going to happen. 
for you know, I'm, I had the news up here, up here on the ticker. Um, it's confirmed at least four Americans have been killed in Israel. Mass atrocities are occurring by the hands of Hamas. Um, it's a mess, and we're going to get into it. Um, so we need to be thinking of the future war heroes, the 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 current soldiers that are going to be sacrificing everything for this country. And Wrangler was all about against these do this doxing. Um, he was completely against Welsh News Network, but when it serves his purpose to dox the shit out of me and and uh, to use Welsh's stream as a way to try to attack me because I called him out on his bullshit too. It just shows he has no foundation. He has no ethics. He doesn't stand for anything. You know, he doesn't take a firm stance on anything. It's whatever benefits him. You know, whatever benefits his channel. He's made it very clear that his top priority is his channel. What is it? What else does he have in his life? Doesn't have education. Probably going to go to prison again. The weird thing is, I, I don't even know if he has a kid or not. He says he has a kid. There's no record of it. It's very, very weird. Does he have, what else does he have to lose? A job? A career? I don't think so. He said he's a gunsmith. But last I checked, if you have a felony, you can't touch a gun. So how are you a gunsmith with felonies? And an open felony. I don't understand how you would be a gunsmith. I was telling you that story about Dale, you know, who had a prior history with methamphetamine. One of the greatest guys you'll ever know. I think we do need to look at some gun laws with some, with some felony, with some felons with being able to, it's bullshit to think that that guy could never touch a shotgun or a rifle again to go hunting. Just my opinion. You're welcome to have a different opinion. I think in my situation, I think it's bullshit too. Like uh, my family are, you know, is uh, avid hunters. Should what happened seven years ago, writing bad checks, make it to where for the rest of my life, I can never go hunt again. Just something to think about. I think it's a national conversation that needs to happen, but you know, um, everybody's entitled to their opinion and everybody uh, is welcome to share their opinions, whether it's on me or anybody else, you know, the doxing shit is bullshit though. And then, and I would just ask anybody uh, stone vet, reach out to me anytime, man, email me. Uh, I guarantee you uh, if we uh, chatted, I'd like you, you'd like me. Um, same with MSG retired, you know. Um, but there's a small amount of people who are just trying to stir up shit, trying to create chaos in this community, you know, try to make things into something they're not, um, you know, for their benefit, you know, because they, there are some people in this community that just love drama. And um, but anyways, I want to wrap this up. Um, just really want to keep our thoughts, you know, not with Wrangler. This is not worth our time. Um, keep our thoughts with our troops right now. Um, this is real stuff. It's it's not good. Um, and it's escalating very, very quickly. So, anyways, I go ahead and end this. Um, I know we went over a lot of shit in the past that I've already covered. But I really wanted to cover it for people who are new to this. And to debunk some of the stuff that Wrangler is saying. To show how Wrangler was against doxing. Now he's for it. Was against Welsh. Now he's for it. Claims to be a vet. Won't give any info on it. You know, all the information out there is that he's stolen Valor, which he is. Let's face it. Won't show any information to debunk it. Um, what else is there to say? But uh, anyways, everybody, thank you for your time. Everybody stay safe out there. Um, I will try to keep everybody posted on my channel, kind of what the what the history or what the, what the future is of this uh, channel. I don't know what that's going to look like. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a two-week, two-month year break. I don't know. But I have to focus on me. I have to focus on my health, and I'm not going to let shit bags like Wrangler fuck with that. Um. I might do a stream or a video here and there, as long as it's not giving me a bunch of stress and, and heartburn and everything, you know, I would be open to do something with, um, with, um, stone vet. 
you know, because uh, I bet if if we did a kind of a stream, uh, it would be fun. We'd laugh a, a lot about it. We'd dunk on Wrangler, and it would be good times. Um, that's why I got onto YouTube is to laugh and be a stress reliever. That's what it was when I first got on here, and it's not that anymore. Um, and that's what I want to get back to. That's what I want to get back to. And um, like I said, I have to focus on my health, and I hope everybody understands that. And I hope this gives people greater context to some of the smears and lies that are out there. Um, but if but anybody has any questions, feel free to email me, corrections101yt at gmail.com. I don't check it every day. Uh, I'm going to be honest, I don't. Uh, but I try to check it every couple of days. Um, and those of you who have my cell phone number, which is several of you out there, feel free to text me, call me. Um, no big deal. It's because I'm taking a break doesn't mean you still can't call me, can't text me. And, uh, you know, um, I wish everybody, everybody the best. Everybody take care of each other. Don't let pieces of shit like Wrangler get you uh, frustrated. I know it's made me frustrated. It's pissed me off. Um, just remember who you are. Work on yourself. Focus on your values, your ethics, morals, everything like that. Um, you know, Wrangler has none of that. It's just the truth. As I see it. As I see it. Okay, guys. But anyways, love y'all. Like, share, subscribe. Do all that YouTube stuff. Blah, 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 blah. Cash app and PayPal will be posted in the description. Um, not asking for money. Just if you want to contribute, feel free to. Whatever. You know, people people will say, hey, I'm trying to ask for money now. I'm not. Just whatever. You know, regardless of what you say here on YouTube, somebody's going to have an issue with it and it's going to turn out into some bullshit. But anyways, guys, I bid everyone adieu. And hopefully we see each other sooner than later. I plan on getting that football channel kicked off somewhat soon, though. Hopefully, Selden Georgia Dogs wants to get that going on because I'm going to have a blast with that. Uh, this channel might be stagnant for a while, but the chan but the football channel will not be. And I'll post that in the description. Make sure you're su subscribed to that. We're going to have a blast doing some trash talk in college football. Uh, it's a huge stress reliever for me, not a stress agitator. So love you guys all. Let's end this. Love you all. Um, take care of each other. Don't let Rango get to you. He's a piece of shit. It's not worth your time. Love y'all. Bye.